So this is a video abstract for a paper that's appearing in Big Data and Society uh, called Big Data, New Epistemologies and Paradigm Shifts. And what the paper is uh, concerned with are new forms of data that are very uh, large in volume, uh, the high in velocity being created in near or real time, uh, they're diverse in variety, being uh, structured and unstructured in nature, uh, they're exhaustive in their scope, uh, striving, to try, striving to capture entire populations or systems, uh, they're fine-grained in their resolution, aiming to be uh, as detailed as possible and uniquely indexical in their identification. And they're relational in nature, containing uh, common fields that enable the conjoining of data sets. And they're also flexible, uh, holding the traits of extensionality, in that you can add uh, new fields easily. And they're scalable, and they can expand in size very rapidly. And what this, uh, these new forms of big data offer is the possibilities of massive, dynamic, uh, varied, detailed, interrelated and low-cost uh, data. And the sources of these data are, are quite diverse and uh, I categorise them into three main uh, types. Uh, the first is uh, directed forms of data where people are still involved in the process of, of directing what is collected and how it's collected and so on. So these include uh, traditional forms of surveillance that hoover up uh, huge amounts of uh, digital feeds. Uh, they're scientific experiments using uh, various kinds of digital devices. And uh, it's a digitization of millions of documents, films, and audio recordings, uh, and so on. The second are automated forms of data generation, and they include uh, automated forms of data uh, surveillance. Uh, they include uh, digital devices, such as smartphones. Uh, they include uh, sense and scan data, uh, interaction and transactional data from across the, uh, the Internet, and also things like the Internet of Things and machine-to-machine -machine communications. And thirdly, there's uh, volunteer data generation that includes social media, such as uh, Twitter and Facebook and so on, uh, but also things like uh, crowdsourcing uh, and citizen science. And uh, the argument from around 2008 onwards uh, is that these big data uh, uh, systems and their technologies are radically changing how uh, business is conducted uh, and governance enacted. And big data has kind of shifted up the hype cycle uh, to suggest that uh, the ways in which uh, uh, the ways in which we do uh, business and the ways in which we conduct governance are going to be uh, altered in quite significant ways. Uh, of course, the question then is, is well, what about the academy? Uh, is there going to be a radical uh, transformation in how knowledge is produced across uh, all disciplines? And this is the question that uh, I'm exploring uh, in the paper. And so there's a quite a nice quote from uh, Simon Arrell uh, in 2010 where he kind of, he, he makes an argument that uh, uh, revolutions in science have often been preceded by revolutions in measurement. So to what degree uh, is this the, is the case? So, with the, so traditionally up until relatively recently, uh, given the cost and the difficulties of generating, processing, analysing and storing data, uh, they've been produced in tightly controlled ways using sampling techniques that limit their scope, their temporality, uh, and their size. So academic knowledge is thus developed uh, using approaches and methods designed to produce insights from relatively small numbers of observations, or alternatively, they've actually struggled to cope, uh, cope with and analyze larger data sets. So big data, however, obviously flows as this kind of wide, deep torrent of timely, varied, resolute, uh, and relational data. So in many cases, uh, the issue is not data scarcity, but rather one of uh, data overload. And this has led to the uh, development of new analytical uh, methods within data science uh, designed to try and extract insights from massive data sets uh, using ma machine learning, data mining techniques, wherein the power of computational algorithms are used to process and analyze data. Uh, and so for some, uh, these new forms of data and analytics are inevitably going to challenge the dominant paradigms of the academy, ushering in new epistemologies across uh, all the disciplines. And this is the contention that I explore uh, in the paper. And in particular, I'm exploring uh, three developments. The first is the notion that big data gives rise to the end of theory, uh, enabling new forms of empiricism in which data can speak for themselves. Uh, the second is the creation of data-driven rather than knowledge-driven uh, science. So this is the idea that uh, hypotheses will emerge out of the data as opposed from out of theory. And the third is the formation of the digital humanities and the computational social sciences, 
uh, that propose uh, radically different ways to make sense of uh, culture, history, economy, uh, society, and so on. So each of these developments proposes a new way to make sense of the world. And the paper sets out critically uh, to review the main arguments that are, are being forwarded. And what the, what the paper concludes is, is that although uh, big data seems set to transfer, transform how research is conducted in the sciences, it's not going to lead to, uh, to the end of theory, but rather will issue, usher in uh, an era of data-driven uh, science. Uh, but at the same time, much more conceptual thinking uh, is required to, to work through the philosophical framing of uh, such an approach. The situation in the humanities and the social sciences, though, is somewhat more complex, uh, given the diversity of their philosophical underpinnings. Uh, big data and new analytics are unlikely to lead to the establishment of new disciplinary uh, paradigms. Uh, what's more likely to happen is, is that big data will enhance the suite of uh, data available for analysis uh, and enable new approaches and techniques, but it won't replace uh, small data studies. And this is uh, partly due to the prevalence and resilience of uh, post-positivist thinking, but also because big data won't be able to answer uh, all the kinds of questions that are of interest to the uh, humanities and the social sciences. Uh, so the effect of big data on the practices of knowledge production are then going to be felt differentially across the academy, but there is little doubt that its effects on epistemology uh, will be felt. So hopefully uh, that's given you a good flavour of what the paper is about and whetted your appetite to go and uh, read about the various arguments uh, that are being made. Okay, thanks.